Welcome back to Return to Daniel. This photo is me around 47 years old. That's in uh, near Vancouver, Canada. And I was uh, with my father, who I still had a relationship before I got mentally ill with the gender dysphoria problem. And I'm gonna short video update as possible. I apologize that um, I was making like monthly updates about how my progression, my detransition from um, being born biological male, making a horrible decision um, when I uh, was never uh, counseled about was I abused as a child uh, when I went through the mental health part of the transgendered uh, health care and <clears throat> make this disclaimer right now I am not here to bash uh, people that live uh, in transgender lifestyle some of you have commented that you're happy my hats are off to you um, you need to find your peace and uh, so the whole point of my message is to stop and prevent the people that have um, been abused and they um, possibly did not get the same mental health counseling that that I didn't get and then I was living in fear at the time to even bring it up with my therapist that's how powerful this disease was in my mind and I got sucked into um, somebody's blog that read that they had transitioned from male to female and I read it and uh, I did not talk about this with some close personal friends. I've been in sustained substance abuse recovery for over 28 years now. I'm shooting this video in March of 2022. I'm five months and a uh, couple of weeks almost uh, since I had my second major um, phalloplasty uh, surgery. Um, I had what's known as a first thing I did when I detransitioned was I cut my hair and then the, the whole process was on. Uh, I couldn't stand myself uh, when I looked at myself in the mirror. God instantly just ripped this craziness right out of my mind, written branch, the desire to put on women's clothes, the fantasy world of, you know, women have a better life and um, see, I was abused as a little boy by an alcoholic mother that told me that men were bad and I would never amount to anything. I'm not here to live in um, a victim role anymore. I'm here to possibly help other people avoid the surgeon's table. And I have had some of you reply that I've helped you do that. And then I'm also here to be supportive for other people that are in detransition. So that's the main point of this return to Daniel.com and the return Daniel YouTube channel. So once again, I ha had the first surgery was the breast removal surgery. And when I had the flat chest again, I was so happy. Then I was crazy trying to find a surgeon that would take my case on. And no surgeon in the USA or Canada wanted to touch me. If I came to them as a biological female to have a penis built, um, they would take my money. And the same thing if I came to them and I was biological male and wanted to have my penis removed, they would do that. But they would not touch me for uh, the detransition part and rebuilding my phallus. So I went to Europe. <clears throat> I um, finally was able to get that first metoyoplasty in 2020. And then a year later, the surgeon uh, rebuilt my phallus and I've had complications. Um, what the problem is, is that the urethra, he had a hard time finding it in that first surgery where he closed the vaginal canal and uh, rebuilding a new urethra that will help me avoid my urine, not where it was down near that vaginal canal. And so, um, he built a small little penis, not very big at all, and that was where the urethra was sitting. So when he did the phalloplasty, he built that 
from, it's called the uh, abdominal flap. And then he just rolled a tube and he put that, my new phallus hangs down. When I looked at myself in the mirror last night, cause I knew I was gonna do a video today. I said, you know what? It does not look anything like God given penis I had that was fully functional and worked and I enjoyed having sex with women. Uh, my problem was uh, I had that psychological abuse in my head. So I always struggled with relationships with women. So, and then I was an isolator and then the disease of alcoholism really messed me up bad. And I have liver problems still to this day. So they have to do special things in my care when I have the surgery. So to wrap this up, the, um, the new phallus is sitting over the top of where that little penis is that has the urethra. So to pee in the shower, I stand up and, and pee and I have to hold that new penis up and let that new little penis where it was done in 2020 shoot the urine out. And so to avoid having problems with urine spraying all over the place, which was my experience when I had the transgender surgery, my urine was shooting over my thighs for uh, gosh, 12, 13, 14 years until I got the reversal. Uh, and so <clears throat> anyway, um, I got to go back for this urethral lengthening surgery is what it is now. And he's doing delicate stages with people now. And the reason is, is that it's the best outcome for you because if they tried to do the urethral lengthening and a, and a phalloplasty in one stage, there's just too many complications that arise. My friends, I suggest you strongly, if you have this transgender dysphoria, gender dysphoria problem, beg and plead with you. It is painful as all get up. I still am wearing diapers five months and two weeks later. When I hang upside down on this inversion table, I have to make sure I have extra toilet paper over that new little penis area. Otherwise, I'm going to drip urine down onto my um, upper body because my upper body is actually hanging down on the inversion table. So get the therapy you need. If you want to join the detransition support group, I think one of the members has got you know, enough time to be able to do that. And it's his passion of his. There's about five of you that I've been in touch with. And <clears throat> you could just uh, add me on Telegram and uh, send me a message at daniel at return to and I'd be more than happy to do that for you. So um, other than that, uh, it's so important. I think it's a tragedy and there's going to be so many young people that years later, they're going to just, oh, and the 40% suicide rate of people that have gone through transgender surgery. Do you think it's a good idea that all of this ideation about if you're not happy being a boy, that you can be a girl, or if you're not happy being a girl, you can be a, a male. That's not the way we were created. I believe it's Psalm 137 in the Bible that says you were knit in your mother's womb perfectly by God. And so I just pray for you. I, my wife and I pray for people that have this problem. And so that's what I'm going to do right now, Lord. Father God, I just pray that anyone that's hurting out there with this, I wouldn't wish this on anyone because it is so painful to be different than the 90 eight percent of normal people in the world that are by the time they're 20 years old they're very comfortable in their own skin if they were a tomboy which is a girl that kind of acts like a boy or they have the girlish tendencies uh, i don't know what they would call that i just pray that there's no more further indoctrination that is going to cause a huge problem in the future of people that are very dissatisfied that they're God-given XX chromosomes for female and XY chromosomes for male, which can never be scientifically changed. And that they were never meant to be uh, masculine, which is the hunter-gatherer. I've done other videos about that. Or they never meant to be the passionate, um, caring, nurturing person, which is the female role. 
and I was miserable. And then I cried out to you one morning in prayer, God, and you instantly ripped this out of me. I pray that is the experience of anybody that's stuck in this. And if you have made the huge mistake and did what I did, I'm praying that you can successfully heal and detransition, and I'm here to be a voice to help you. And I pray this, that no more people will commit suicide and that all of this craziness can stop. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, uh, reach out, uh, Daniel at returntodaniel.com. Bye for now.